what's going on guys welcome back to clash with eric today is the clash champs cup grand finals match first place is taking home a thousand dollars in today's match second place walking home with ten thousand gems and the teams that are playing today are mcs and unicorns of love and they are live so here we go Apparently, I lost game sound at some point, <laughs> so we're just going to have to fix that afterwards. But Synthe started us off with some dragons and some lightning, taking out the core of the base there, getting the sweepers, getting the inferno, and get a little bit of quake damage over on the top corner. We'll have his heroes come in there with a super wall break, going after the center of that wall. Remember, a wall has to be at least 15 wall pieces long to be able to get a, a super wall breaker or a regular wall breaker to be able to target the middle of it. And so he had to go after the very center of that wall. Because it was long enough, that top one obviously wouldn't be long enough, I don't think, to count the walls. But there we go. Synthe is mapping that out there. Gets the wall break. Works the AI correctly and charges his heroes in. He wants to go in and break the ring of defenses here. He fights through the enemy king, fights through the eagle artillery, gets the scatter shot down, and he's still looking pretty good here. He already uses king ability. So the queen was getting targeted by the grand explosion, so she starts to get targeted, but he missed that. I missed that air defense up there. He'll send in an Electro Dragon after it. And the Electro Dragon will continue working along that top edge. But he might have had other plans for that Electro Dragon. So let's keep that in mind here as he continues to move forward. Queen goes down. He'll start in the Dragons. Trying to get them a little bit deeper in the base there. But one of them splits off. He'll be careful with the other ones. He does catch a bunch of Black Mines there with the balloons as he tries to path through there. e -Drag's still working up at the top side. He does get a couple Dragons to path through the middle. More Black Mines go off, but they all go to the same Dragon. The Dragon goes down, and here comes the Dragons in from the top corner, and they're gonna need to push across the Town Hall, but Tesla's popping across the middle of the base there. The Dragon in the middle looks like it's got it under control. It'll take care of those, and he'll push his way into the CC. He's got the Air Defense on the top corner. He's got the Multi Inferno engaged, and he'll get a little bit of extra damage there while he makes that approach. But here comes the blimp traveling through the dragons. And you'll need to rage up that blimp to ensure it takes the town hall down. A couple dragons split off and you're going to fight off the royal champion at the bottom corner. You'll need his royal champion to come in the bottom corner and go get that air defense at the end. So he needs to be patient with it. He unfortunately used his ward ability before the blimp arrived to try to protect it. And arrived at the same time as the dragon. So they all took the blast. He doesn't have a lot of defenses left to go through. Just a couple arch towers and mainly that scatter shot. The ground expo is not going to hurt him. A lot of dragons break to the outside. Not looking bad here from Synthe. RC can use her ability to get the archer tower down before it can ever get a shot up. And into the scatter shot we go. As the RC was getting some tanking from the dragon. If she takes it. It's a triple. I think it's a triple either way. But there we go. Steps in. The Blues take the ground expo. And the RC goes into cleanup. And Synthe opens up with a three star for MCES. Beautiful attack there. Zap Dragons. At Town Hall 13. Let's go. Chichen is live. Here we go. Coming in for the first attack from Unicorns of Love. He's coming in with Inferno Dragons. He's got a couple of Lightning to go take out the Sweepers. And then he'll have to push through with five Skeletal Spells and three Freezes. With a couple of Sneaky Goblins to form out the funnel. There's the Lightning. Grab out the Sweeper. Just went after the one that was facing up on the base. And you see where the angle of approach that he's going to go for. He can get the... E-Drag and the Blimp or a Stone Summon to go get the Town Hall. He dropped in the uh, the E-Drag first and it activates the Town Hall as it forms the funnel. Not ideal, but it's alright. You should uh, be able to work through it. He's got the Freeze there to lock it down with the Air Defense as well. And the Inferno Dragon is on top of it. Got the CC pull, but the Inferno Dragon bursts the Town Hall up. I think only one of them locked onto it, but that was more than enough here. Stone Summon in from the right side. Gonna go clear out that uh, Scatter Shark compartment while the Queen steps up there and grabs the Air Defense. He already funneled the king to go inside of the base over there. The CC is on the opposite side. So we saw headhunters come out of the CC and they didn't actually do much there as the Frog Dragons made quick work of them. And it's going to make so with a CC down, there was a hound inside, I believe, and it died with the CC. That's going to be a high amount of value here to continue to push the heroes through. He's got the dragons kind of dying off in the left side. So they're all regrouping down on the bottom side. They're going to have to join with the heroes. They're going to have to push across the base. He still has a big Tessa farm. He does get the enemy RC engaged and down. And here comes his RC in from the bottom corner. These Inferno Dragons are on their last stride. As the King is doing some tanking, he's got one more Skeletal Spell that he has not deployed yet, but he needs to keep the damage off of his RC. She's going to be critical to the success of this attack, and he needs to protect her 
from that single inferno but the expo will burn up a lot of the skeletons so will the bomb tower and the wizard tower so keep an eye on it if the rc gets targeted early then it could be the end of the raid here but if she gets through it's a triple all day long she does get targeted early pop the ability pop it oh oh he got it he got it queen still has her ability rc will go down is there anything he missed no there's nothing he missed the queen can step through it's close but chi chin rocks in another triple and unicorns of love matches mces and they're gonna stay toe to toe with them as we start off this war now remember guys this is going to be a best of two series so the score from this war will add to the score of the next and the combined total of the two will determine the winner remio is live coming in from mcs start off with a zap quake we got that entire top section of the base we got in there like half a second late while i was <laughs> being slow to press the button but he did take out a big section up there, getting a scatter shot down. And a handful of buildings around it. Looks like he just cleared out that entire top compartment. And he got some quake damage over onto the other side. But here we go with the log launcher, pushing his way in, driving the heroes into the base there. They get full access all the way into the core, but it doesn't actually finish off the multi inferno in the core of the base. So as RC will be able to step through there, look at the RC. If she can hold on to her ability through the expo and then pop it on the expo, she's going to get a lot here. Oh, she already used it. Just kidding. Hmm. Is he going to leave that up in the middle? The king still has his ability. He'll get the CC pull. Headhunters and goblins come out. Pop his ability early to try to get his barbarians and take down the headhunters. Tess is pop around the middle. He's going to have his queen chase the hound, which actually is going to work to his advantage because it's pulling the queen back into the core of the base where she's not going to get stuck on the trash down at the bottom he'll drop in the poison to deal with the pups he needs the queen to get that multi inferno needs her to get the expos she still has her ability this is a critical point of the attack right here she breaks to the south and no go back up queen get the last shot of the multi oh he's in trouble he's in trouble he drops in the ice hounds test is pop in the top corner he needs to get through this core and he's gonna take a lot of traps in the area. He wanted all of that down. The log launcher needed one more shot on that multi inferno or any of the heroes taking a shot there would have done. But his ice hound freezes up on the air defense over on the bottom side as he works his way through the town hall, trying to get into this multi inferno, hits the haste, everything rejoins. I think he just took the town hall blast and no, Remio. It's falling apart here and MCES making the first mistake of the war and Remio is not going to be able to carry this one through. Couple of mistakes there. Wasn't able to get the value that he's hoping with the heroes and fighting through multiple multi-infernos is just a death sentence for these Lalo attacks. The more multi-infernos, the harder Lalo is. Single infernos obviously are best case scenario when you want to go with a Lalo. Because it just mows your balloons down too fast. So you just got to be really careful. But he'll climb this one above a 90% here. Not a bad percentage for a fail. But it's going to it's gonna be a rough start here for MCS. If uh, Unicorns of Love is able to get the triple on the board. And put the score away from them early in the match. But remember it is a best of two. So even if one team falls behind. They can make up for it in the next round. Because we'll be doing 10 attacks total for each team. We'll see who ultimately pulls ahead. Sahara. Live from Unicorns of Love. Coming in against Uriam. He's got a super giant witch attack with the Zap Quake. A little bit of freeze. In fact, a lot of freeze. It is a frozen witch attack here with one invisibility spell. You'll use the lightning to take out the scatter shot here and everything on the right side. Got the wizard tower and clears the way there. He'll have the king come in the top corner. He's already funneled out just a little bit there. He's going to get the king with the ice golem to go in and get the multi-inferno up top. That'll leave only single infernos, which is going to make the witches that much more effective. Now, where's this log launcher going to come in? Does he want to go in through the single inferno or does he want to go in through the scatter shot? He might go right through the single inferno. The witches are deployed high up on the base there. They're all going to go south because of the king's funnel. The king will go in there and get huge value there. Freezing up just to ensure that he goes all the way through and gets the cannon as well. 
taking advantage of those freezes and a handful of his uh, giants are splitting off here some of the witches might go with it we'll see what happens with that but those giants up there are gonna need a little extra support don't waste them the main push of the attack here going forward he's getting the log launcher hits onto the scatter shot and all the way through the core he'll go and get the hits at the cc as well he frees all that up preserve the health of the witches and there's the ward ability protecting the eagle strikes there and it'll uh, protect his approach to the scatter shot as he continues on he'll get the town hall activation right here off of the logs and he needs to get this uh, cc or the cc down and he needs to get the eagle artillery down a lot of the witches have broken the top side they're going to take out the eagle artillery and they should rejoin back with the main group and take out the pad and not clear not leave anything left he'll pop his rc ability get the town hall down looking good here he needs to regroup and circle back around the base he's got just over a minute left he'll make the rc invisible the warden working with the witches going to the top side he'll help him get the wizard tower down they'll start to work their way to the single inferno watch that warden up there if he takes that single he should have enough to clear a lot more with that warden up there He's got the witches circling around. They're getting some skeletons into proper position. The warden not targeting the right building. He now targets the wall. What is he doing up there? Come on, warden. Start targeting the single. There we go. We got the cover on it. He freezes up to protect the witches. The queen circling around the bottom side. She's got time. She's with the witches. It's going for the triple. And Unicorns of Love is going to take the lead here into attack number two. And MCS with that fail is going to have to start to make their comeback nice job here to sahara beautiful insight on that attack and ripped it apart here with the witches let's go Uriam. coming to next uses a uh, yeti blimp to open it up here no it's a blizzard it's not a yeti blimp you get the cc the uh, super wizard's in there yeah oh they died they died that last invisibility went to waste he tried to make him visible to get him to shoot the CC, but I think they died to the Town Hall Blast. Always a little bit difficult to drop a Blizzard at the Town Hall because you have to drop it a little bit shallow so that they don't get hit by the Blast. So they take the Town Hall out and then turn around. But you always run the risk that they're going to get hit by the Blast. They'll drive the Queen and the King in here. They fight the Hound off in relative safety. There is a bit of damage there. It's not ideal. You have the Ice Hound or the Ice Golem, I mean, pop. And the RC will try to work in on the flank of the heroes, but the RC is going to run into the enemy queen. The king, not going to have enough punch to take her down. He needs to get this other multi down as well, and he's not going to get it. He'll get the one multi at the bottom. He doesn't get the queen. He's maybe looking for a lot more value there. He'll make the RC invisible with the last one. Does he make anything freeze? No, he doesn't. Okay. Okay. How's he going to deal with this multi? Definitely wanted more value out of the heroes, and it's a bit ambitious to think they could get that much with a hound while they're starting to fight the CC while under fire from defenses. So we'll see how he handles that as he continues through, but the Lalo's gonna have to work their way in. They have to go pick up that last expo, and then they'll shoot into the scatter shot. The sweeper will be uh, fought a little bit as he makes his approach. The ice hounds are taking the other scatter shot. They get inside the middle range over there, they're gonna take it down. And he'll start to engage the heroes, but he's uh, gonna have to go through the multi inferno and dump right into the enemy queen. He freezes up the queen with the multi inferno, but that other multi inferno that got missed is gonna beat these blues down. They do get the one multi, but his warden's in a very vulnerable position because those uh, that multi inferno is gonna wreck all the blues, and the queen will turn on the warden. And there we go, guys. Uriam coming up short. MCS is uh not having their best ward we normally see them put up 14 or 15 stars regularly and today they're sitting at 13 this attack fell apart as he didn't get the blizzard value he's hoping for he didn't get the hero value that he's looking for which was probably directly related to each other like he probably would have got a lot more hero value had he got the blizzard value but the heroes not getting the value that they needed because the uh, blizzard did step up into the town hall after it dropped like look at this drop here watch where he dropped and watch what happened to the wizards All right so he dropped a little bit close a little bit close to that town hall and they must have died to the blast like they take it down immediately but they took out the building that was behind them like this building right here was down so i think they must have stepped up into the cc which pushed them too close to the town hall and then they took the blast yeah, and they're setting a little bit too close to the flame on that one. Lost in the triple. 
But we'll see what happens with the Unicorns of Love here. And maybe they'll make a mistake as well and uh, give MCS a chance. But remember, guys, there's a lot of war left to be played. So don't rule any team out until it's over. We got a Queen Charge Lalo. Start off with a Yeti Blimp. You'll go right to the Sweeper. But he drops the Blimp before the Black Mines and... The sweeper hits the blimp back, and that makes so we get to that compartment. Notice how the rage covers the entire compartment, so that no matter where the Yeti search forward to, they'll always be inside the rage. He doesn't get the air defense down, but he did get the scatter shot. He can work with that. Looks like he'll funnel out the queen and head towards that eagle artillery compartment. He can go into the center compartments from there, try to get to this uh, ground, this um, single inferno. A lot of storages in the middle that could uh, potentially stall the queen up and make it a little bit difficult to get into that single inferno in a timely manner. But we'll see what he can do here. He'll need to start the Lalo by then anyways. He's not going to make it that far. He just needs to get the single artillery down and he can start his Lalo. And then have his progress towards the enemy heroes. Maybe get this enemy RC down and come with the Lalo in from the top corner and go get that multi-inferno down early. That wouldn't be a bad idea. I like, I like that approach. And that's going to be the most time efficient if he decides that's what he wants to go with. He still hasn't used his king, though. He could use his king, potentially, to come in at the end of the attack there and take the scatter shot and the queen. That would be 200 IQ right there. I like how this is getting set up. Queen does wall break all the way in, and she does go to the core first. He did get the CC pull out of the initial blimp, which is a uh, nice... That's one of the nice advantages of using a blimp is one of the biggest things why we use a blimp is if we get a key target and get the CC pulled, we can fight the CC off in safety. He'll start his way in. The queen eventually maybe going to go back and go get this air defense and stuff over here, but the Lalo is going to skip that for now. Go towards the town hall. And a slow moving Lalo hasn't used any spells. He doesn't have a lot of spells to use with it. He's got a freeze and a haste. He'll pop the haste right there. As RC comes in the bottom corner, she gets burned up by the single inferno. Warden, step up. Oh, I was a little bit worried that the warden wouldn't step up there with the king standing under her. But the king does go and get what he needs to do. The queen takes out both of the enemy heroes and then steps up to tank the scatter shot. Still slow moving. Still got to go back to that top corner. The king can technically go up there and go get that, depending on how he passes her. He needs to clean up to go to the right spot. But time is going to be a potential issue here. The queen continuing to move through. 34 seconds to clean it up. And time. Keep an eye on that clock, ladies and gentlemen. This one's going to be close. This one's going to be close. The king going the wrong way. He has to go through another wall here. Did he find at least a weak enough wall? He has to go through two walls. But he might turn around. He might get turned around there as soon as the minions and pups take out the enemy king. And he does. He's going back north. 15 seconds to go. Can he make it? The final push. He has three balloons and a minion that he has not deployed. He'll drop him in. Six seconds. The queen circling up. And it is not going to make it. 98%. And it's a time fail. For unicorns of love and that'll open the door here that'll start to creak that door open and give mcs a chance to recover after their failed tax kingsman is live here we go one of the queen charge into lalo if we do it a little bit faster than unicorns of love did and see if we can get the triple here start off with a yeti blimp as well Going to the deeper side of this compartment, potentially. No, he can't really get the CC pull there. He'll get the funnel out of this. You know, get some good value out of the Yetis. He gets the RC down, so not wasted value here. I do like to see the CC pull with the blimp wherever possible. It definitely improves the value of the blimp by a large amount there by making so the queen can fight it in safety. But this Yeti might jump over the wall. It's going to take out that cannon down there. Joe will be nice for him. He got the super wall break to drive the queen in. He hasn't followed on the top side of the queen yet, so hopefully she stays in. Or maybe he's just trying to... I don't know what he's trying to do with the queen. Is he trying to get her to get the town hall? Is that the goal? The king will go to the top side. He'll send in the RC. Okay, the king will go in and he will get the town hall. The top corner is open and the king can step in there. A lot easier than the Queen Cannon with only defenses out on the edge of the base there by the RC. She was able to come in there and form the funnel while clearing a lot up ahead there. She'll step all the way up and she will get the cannon down, get the wizard tower down, and then take that grand expo off of the Queen unless she goes down first. Oh, one more shot. She doesn't get it. She doesn't get it. The Queen will 
She'll be fine. She'll be fine. She only has one expo on her. She can heal through it without an extra spell support. The king gets stalled up by ground skellies up there. He hasn't popped his ability yet, but he's going to start taking eagle strikes. The jump is going to carry the queen through. That gives her access to the multi-inferno and the eagle artillery. Approaching the one minute and 30 second mark there. and Or passing it, really. The queen is uh, not going to the eagle just yet, but she should get that enemy queen down. Needs the last shot on the expo, and needs the king to hurry up and get that town hall down. He's getting stalled up by a tornado trap to pull him away, but he steps back up. He's going to grab it down, and he'll continue on. The jump is going to carry the queen into the Tesla farm in the core of the base. Lalo in from the left side, and he'll try to work his way towards his eagle artillery. The queen will engage the king here in just a moment. She still has her ability. She can use it to get through. Miss some Teslas there. Gonna have to go back for those Teslas or drop in a couple balloons. The king can get into tanky position for them. If he can help out, he can get through that. 36 seconds. Nope, 45 seconds. <laughs> what a, what, I've made up a number there. <laughs> He's gonna clear out the bottom quarter here with an extra balloon to go into the cleanup. And the balloons will surge back across the base there with the king tanking. There are already a couple, a couple minions that moved to the area and cleared some of the traps. He's gonna get it. And Kingsman from MCES gets the triple on the board. But they're still gonna need another defense. Kingsman did what he needed to do for the team here. But he's gonna need... His uh, teammate there, Tryhard or Remio, to get a big defense here and push this back into a tie war. Oh, Makun. This is what MCES needs. They need. Komakun to come in here with a fail. But if uh, they don't, then Unicorns of Love will go into the final attack of the first war ahead. But we'll see what happens. Komakun pushing his way in here with a. Uh, Queen charge right through the multi inferno. Decided not to go with a blimp on this one. He has no jumps. He's got three super wall breakers total. And he's going to try to push all the way in. Get the scatter shot. Heavy, heavy fire here for the queen. Ooh, right in the line there on the queen ability. And nerves of steel here as he steps into the enemy queen. He'll have to go to ability anyways. But not auto ability. Not auto ability. Popped it just one strike early. To give his queen a little bit more health pull to make sure she doesn't go down through the queen's the enemy queen. That could be uh, devastating there if that happens. But he'll send in a couple blues there. Finding some Teslas in front of the scatter shots. He sends in another super wall breaker. That super wall break actually going to give him some really good access. From there, he can hit the scatter shot and the multi. No, we can't hit the multi, can he? Or can he not hit it either? Here comes the next. Oh my god, look at this wall break. This is to give full access to the core of the base. The RNC sweeps through. She's going to take out the Eagle Artillery. King working on the outside, distracting the single Inferno. The Queen getting all the pups down there before the RC gets distracted off. She steps through. She gets targeted by the single. He'll need to make her invisible or something there. Pay attention. Pay attention. Don't lose your RC. Oh, he got the multi down. He got the multi and he got the Tessa farm. That worked out perfect. There comes the Slammer. Slammer's going to go right into the... Uh, Scatter shot here and work his way through. There's lots of tanking there from the pups, giving cover from the scatter shot. No, no spell support needed there. Only a small group of loons getting targeted now. The queen makes her way all the way to the core of the base. They should get distracted on that enemy king for just a moment. But Inferno Dragon roasts that king and makes it easy for his queen to move through. Pops the warden ability through the town hall. A minute left to go. The queen steps up. She'll take the last damage of the weakened single in front of the RC hit earlier, and he's blown it out of the park here. Queen charged Lalo from Komakun. And he's got the triple on the board, and he'll hold the lead here for his team, Unicorns of Love. Holding strong. Whew, all right. <laughs> good stuff. Unicorns of Love, looking good. One star up, percentage advantage. Uh, we're looking at a 7.6% split, which is 38 buildings. All right, ladies and gentlemen. The final attack of the first war is in. Let's dive into MCES and see if Tryhard can do what he needs to do here. And then we'll dive back to the other side and we'll see who wins the first war in this best of two series. Is it going to be MCS or is it going to be Unicorns of Love? There is a big percentage deficit here from that low 67% that MCS put up earlier. But he does get the wall break on the wall. The wall's just long enough there to get a wall breaker to target the middle of it. He'll have a Yeti go and form the funnel on one side with a wizard. 
Queen should step through and go through the wall break, obviously. And he'll pop his king ability, get the enemy king down, get the scatter, and the multi is going after a lot here to set up for dragons. And uh, with no lightning, no blimp, nothing like that to provide additional support here for the heroes, they're getting huge value for the area that they're going into, but he's not getting the CC pull. That's why dragons are going to be a really good option to follow this up with because the dragons can fight the CC. They can handle it just fine. He dropped in the E drag. E drag will get some good chains deep in the base there, taking out infrastructures all the way to the core. And then continue to get shots here. Dropping more blues there down with the E drag to provide a little extra support. And the E drag will continue to survive on the outside, pushing these dragons all the way in, tightly funneled in, all engaged the enemy queen at the same time. He's got the blimp, but I don't know what it's for. It's, no, it's going to go to the town hall. He'll fight out the CC, but only headhunters come out. He lock onto the warden. Warden, no! Oh! Lost his warden early! All these dragons HP pool is going to be diminished as he continues to work his way through. He'll drop in the RC on the backside to go after the, the uh, wizard tower. And you're dropping the bats. The bats take out the scatter shot, drop, dropping inside of the minimum rage. He's still looking good here. Still looking good. The RC getting some distraction there from the enemy RC. You have to freeze it up there. Try to preserve her health. You pop the ability. Gets the single down. Gets the air defense down. Gets the single throw down. And takes the raw champion out. The dragons will sweep around. And he's got the triple on the board. All defense is down. Plenty of time to clean it up. And we will pause for one second. And we'll let the other attack resolve. And we'll go watch it in its entirety. And we'll find out what happened. But MCES... Potentially tying up the stars here in the first war. And if they can go into the second war with only percentage behind, they can still make up for this. They can still come back and they can win this grand finals match. There we go. Try hard with the triple. Here we go. Oh. All right. Here we go. Ah, where's my timer? There it is. <laughs> my timer's like a second late. That's all right. Let's drive in the king and get ready for electro dragons coming in from unicorns of love. Electro dragons, huh? Okay, I see good chain pathing through the core area right here. That can chain all the way through. Awesome chains through the expos, but he needs to come up on the back side of the sweepers or onto their flank over here, I guess. That's exactly where he's coming from. He'll drive in the heroes in from the top corner. He'll uh, pop his king and queen, take down the enemy queen. And he'll leave a little bit up in that compartment, but that's okay. He has a blimp. He can use the blimp to go get the town hall, looks like. I thought maybe he'd go out to the multi inferno, but no, he's going to the town hall. He's got the CC pull, the CC traveling through. It is a hound CC again. It's only two headhunters come out. So that's not going to be at the dealt with. Or he's not going to have to deal with that with the other troops that have to fight a hound with his, his heroes never pulling the CC, but good rage is here. And the blimp take advantage of the compact area around the town hall, but the tornado trap stalled him up. He does get the rages up on the top side to push the dragons through up there, but they're not inside of the rage. They're avoiding the... Oh no, they're chasing the king up there. The king is the best air defense in the game. He just got all the dragons killed up there. So RZ picked them all off while they're chasing the king. And... What's the... Is this... Ladies and... Gentlemen, the E drags fall way short. How high can he climb the percentage, though? I don't know exactly what the percentage that he needed is, but keep an eye out for black mines. Um, I think they were 38 buildings behind. I think they're gonna be okay. I think the unicorns of love will say with the percentage advantage going into attack number two. I think they're going to or war number two. I mean. I think that they still will win this war. We'll have to look at the exact percentage and see where it lands. But I believe that Unicorns of Love will take war number one in this best of two series. Here we go. The result is in 13 to 13. 
And Unicorns of Love takes the first war with a 13 building split. MCS with a big hiccup there early in the war there with a 67% and that just cost them the war. But Unicorns of Love almost, almost doesn't make it through there. But we're going to go into war number two very, very close. And we will see how they do in the second one because the scores of the two are going to add together and the combined total between the two will determine which team is going to move on and take a thousand dollars home as a prize second place not going home empty handed though they're going to get 10,000 gems as a prize so guys make sure that like button hit that subscribe button don't forget to use code eric and let's dive right into here as curry is starting us off here from unicorns of love synthe is on defense now since they had a really nice attack there in the previous war but curry's gonna start it off very very simple with a zap go wee wee it's a zap go wee wee at town hall 13 using super wizards and witches with golems and a log launcher but where do we start he zaps out the entire left side compartment taking out a scatter shot and he'll jump his way in the base uh the jump the walls are kind of open anyway. It's interesting that he chose to use a jump right there. He can't super wall break it. And he doesn't have a ton of spell support. So using the jump there is going to make so that he has direct access in. And it's going to make so his heroes don't end up walking off to the sides. He'll freeze up the multi-inferno. He can only really afford one freeze right there. He needs to save the other one for the town hall approach. And he needs this warden to step up into a better position. He's kind of veering off to the south. He'll pop the ward ability right there. And that'll... Protect the uh, log launcher there for a bit to make sure it gets more value, but he does get stalled up there trying to get this multi inferno down, and that's going to make so that he might end up missing it altogether. As nothing's really going to be able to go back for it. The queen is still in the area guarding that. The witch is going to drawn into the multi inferno. This is not ideal. The queen will pop the hound. He has the town hall already pretty weakened up there. The RC is moving through. She's getting distracted by uh, grass skellies and pups and all kinds of stuff over there. This queen will be able to go get that multi now. Finish off the enemy queen. He'll need his RC. And the... Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This town hall. What is he going to do about this? He'll get, the, he'll get the queen down. He'll freeze up. Okay, okay. You can still get this. That's a queen ability. Can he still pull through for a triple though? Is a triple too much to ask at this point? He's got golems left. There's still super wizards. The witches are rejoining with the queen. It was looking like it might have gone to a one star, but now it's looking like it's going to go to a three. The super wizard is still alive on the outside. One more can to work his way through. The witches are regrouping. And if he can shoot through the last couple defenses with the protection for the queen, with the witches, then he's going to be in a really, really good spot. Even if the queen doesn't get it all, the warden can still help out there. One witch is still surviving, and he doesn't go to the cannon first. All right, all right. It's going to be close here. He's got the witch in the back row. She'll fight her way through. Oh, no. I don't think he's going to make it now. I'm changing my mind. There's only one witch in the back row, and it's going to work its way through, but it's not going to have enough force to get through two defenses. It's going to overwhelm it a little bit too much, I think. If it was already weak enough there, then maybe the test is already weak. But the combination of the two is going to be too much for one witch to handle. She can't spawn fast enough to provide protection for herself. And he'll get out of here with a 98% two star to open it up here for Unicorns of Love. <sighs> Take a breather. Take a breather. <laughs> that was a crazy attack there. That's uh, one that we don't normally see at Town Hall 13. We see that a lot at the lower Town Hall levels. But to see that at Town Hall 13 is... A little bit of an oddity, but here we go with Uriam coming in next. Uriam coming in with a queen. Nope, not a queen charge. It is a blizzard Lalo. He has the blimp and he'll use that to probably snipe out the town hall or... No, what am I talking about? Uriam coming in with a blizzard Lalo, which uses the blimp, and he'll charge right into the single inferno and he drops it really, really shallow into the base there. But he's still going to clear out everything in that compartment. And how far can he go with it? He'll get the chains and get the CC mostly down, except for the Hound. He obviously can't get the Hound down. Got the Expo down. Didn't get the King, but he did clear out a lot there. He'll draw the Hound over for an approach to the Town Hall. He can fight it over there with the Queen. Fight it off in safety. Was that enough value for a Blizzard? That's the question you got to ask yourself here. Was that... 
worth it to use those extra spells there rather than go with a yeti blimp you'll drop in a super paw breaker it dies in the correct position dropping into damage with no tanking so it dies and opens up the quarter wall allowing the queen to more easily step through the king will work his way in as well he drops in a balloon up ahead to push the king inward and with no cc to deal with He's going to be in a really good spot here. I'll drop in his Royal Champion in the bottom corner. She'll go in here and get the Eagle Artillery down. The enemy king is still blocking the way a little bit. We'll see if she engages him. If she does, it could uh, put too much damage on her. and She could reduce her value by a lot. But she's not looking bad here. She should search forward and go over to the single Inferno. And at least be able to pop her ability and get a couple defenses down over there. One defense. Got the Bomb Tower down. All right. All right. He has the... Uh, Bob tear that got left behind. He drops in one blue to take care of that. The other blues surge their way forward, working the way into the scatter shots. Second scatter shot is targeting balloons, unfortunately. He has another hound crossing through, though. The other hounds do arrive. Not looking bad here. All of these scatter shots are tanked. The queen is tanked. He pops the worry ability, protecting everything. And he gets the headhunters to take the queen down. And he's looking good. He gets all the traps uh, triggered in the middle of the base stairs. The headhunters cross through. I guess that doesn't really make a big difference, but he'll freeze up the uh, multi-inferno in the middle and it looks like he's got the triple on the board and ladies and gentlemen MCS was down on percentage pretty heavily after the first war and this attack right here in combination with the fail there from Unicorn's Love is going to put MCES in the lead for the first time Let's go all right, here we go again. Chichen coming in from Unicorns of Love with the next attack. And he's got a Zap Lalo for this one. We're going to have to go out to the Queen. A multi over here if you wanted to. You go after... Really at the RC with 7 Lightning. But he didn't bring any Earthquake, so I think he is going after the Queen, if I had to guess. Waiting for her to get in the right position here. Here we go. One. Okay. All right. All right. Goes after the queen. Gets the multi inferno. Gets a little bit of damage onto. Oh, we got the sweeper right there, didn't he? No, that was a builder hut. Just kidding. That's a builder hut. I saw the uh, two by two square knocked out there, but the sweepers are up top. All right. He'll get the funnel formed here. I'll drive the king inward. We're gonna sneak a goblin to be deployed. That's way over on the other corner. Big Tessa farm pops as he drops in his queen and a giant to go in here. And a couple of ground skellies drops in a Valkyrie to go help deal with the ground skellies. He'll freeze up to preserve his queen ability. And can he get this king into taking position? Get this can down and preserve his queen for a little bit longer. He'll pop his king ability. The queen gets spun around by the tornado. Hopefully the tornado doesn't trigger the, the queen ability here. Trying to preserve it as long as possible. Keep the damage off of the queen. And she does have to go to ability there as the town hall locks onto her for just a second. As the barbarians die out, the king... Will get the town hall down and he'll drive his queen inward, but this is not going his way. He definitely wanted to get the multi inferno down, but the Tessa farm stops him up. He'll drop an invisibility spell and he'll get his way through one of the multi infernos. But he's gonna have to go out to the other one. Luckily, the Tessas were good value as well. Taking out five Tessas is just as much damage relieved off the base there as going in and taking out a multi inferno. So he will drive his stone slammer in there. That's hit a black mine, but he will take it down there with only one target on this, that multi inferno getting soaked up. The headhunters get pulled. They're going over to the warden. They're kind of separated. Keep on the headhunters. Watch the warden. Watch the warden. Watch the warden. Oh, he goes to manual ability. Come on. Somebody get on there. Take out the headhunters. There's a pup on it. There's a pup. He's getting him down. Poison's got it. The warden lasts just long enough, and he takes down the CC. Headhunters out of the way. Warden's still at full health. Still moving through strong. Slammer cleared out the core of the base there. He's got the first scanner shot engaged. Going down right there. But doing heavy damage to the center group of balloons. He needs to get the scanner shot down. He needs the slammer to really do some work. He wants that wizard tower to go down. So he can regroup down at the archer tower. And make his final approach. He's got a freeze. He's got two more balloons that he has not deployed. He can save them for the air defense. As soon as he uses the freeze. He can get all of these frozen up together. And do it. There we go. Send in the blues. Backside. Backside. Go. Where are they? Oh, they're all, they're all the way over on the right. They're all the way over on the right. Is that still going to go through? Oh, come on, blues. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Go, 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 go. Get in there. The blues make it in the minimum range. And Chichen has got the triple on the board here. Unless this hound pops and kills a lot of his cleanup. It's not over yet. The king is still in the way. 
The king is still blocking the way so the blues can't get over to the storage quickly. That's going to be a problem. He gets the CC down quickly. He burns through it. He's got six seconds. Five, four, three, two. Everybody, no! The king stops it all up. And the king is the best air defense in the game once again. And he stops it and prevents them from getting the last storage down. And it's a 99% time fail for Unicorns of Love. And now... After MCS lost the first war, they could swing it back heavy here with another triple. They're already ahead, but can they move up another star? Here we go. Try hard coming in next. And from MCS, we got a queen charge Lala with a Yeti blimp. Be dropping this blimp onto the uh, scatter shot here. Take that out there and we'll see which way he wants to drive this queen. A couple sneaky goblins come out to go get the storage down in the compartment. While also the yetis take out the scattershot and the queen. Looking like she's going to go down on the base towards the town hall. To find out that enemy king and he's already got the super wall breaker. Opened up the wall down by the expos. Got to die in the proper position so it does open up the walls. It is a common tactic that people use to put those open corners so that the wall breakers can't target them, but uh, pro players find a way around it. They judge the exact amount of damage and they get the wall breaker to open up the wall anyways and allow the access for the queen to be able to step through. Sometimes she steps through on her own, but sometimes she doesn't because her AI can be a little bit funky. And that's a common question we get asked is why do so many pro players open up those corners? Well, that is your reason, guys. It's to mess with the queen AI. The king stepping all the way in the bottom corner and he's going to go in there, pop his ability, take the town hall down while the queen continues onto the core. She's got to jump. If he uses the jump to open up access to the scatter shot here, that'd be some good value. But maybe he opens up to the, on the scatter shot side of the channel here. Or does he go to the, uh, try to get access to this one. Hard to say what he wants to do here. What do you think is the higher value? Going up or towards the bottom multi? He decides to go up. And he doesn't want to open up too much here. He wants to direct the queen through the base. He wants it around the corner there. He'll have his RC come in and go get the multi inferno. His queen has the healer, so she can handle the damage there from the Grand Warden statue. So if the RC takes out the multi inferno and gets out this big Tesla farm, he's in a really good spot. Early ward ability while he fights out the queen, protecting his headhunter so they can sneak in there and snipe that enemy queen off. The queen still doing a good job taking eagle strikes there to his big pack of blooms. Oh my god, there's a big hit there to the balloons. They took so much damage, but they're still alive. They're still alive. They're still moving. They're all at low health there. Another hit there from a red bomb or another eagle strike or a little bit of damage to this multi inferno can burn through a lot of them very, very quickly. His RST is still protected in the bottom there. He's going to make her way through, get some damage onto the multi. She gets targeted by the cannon now, but it looks like he's made it far enough through the base. The RC goes down. More bulls in for the backside. And Tryhard has done it. MCS going from behind and have pulled way ahead here with the first two attacks. 13 to 13 in the first war and it was a big percentage advantage that MCS was trying to fight back from but they are starting off so strong in this war on offense and defense two triples on the board and they are ahead Unicorns of Love desperately needs a triple on the board right here guys coming in against Uriam Let's see what he can do with a super witch attack. He's got two jumps and four rages for this one. Going heavy on the rages and no poison. Only one freeze. We'll see what he can do with it. He's obviously going to ward walk all the way in and grab out this scatter shot. That shot is some big value there, but he needs to make sure this funnel is solid. How far does he... How far can he realistically go here with this warden walk without costing too much time that he ends up time failing? By by leaving up these buildings here on either side, depending on which way he wants to go, I think he's going to go to the Eagle Artillery first, but he's going to end up leaving up some potential structures here. He sends in a Valkyrie to go clear ground skellies and pull the CC. Okay. Interesting choice to pull the CC right there. Watch out, the warden. Oh, no. Freezes up the headhunters. Oh, no, 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 the hound, the hound, the hound is in a really bad position. Uh-oh. Super Witch is right out of the corner to go in there. The other troops are kind of surging ahead there to go fight the single Inferno too early. Can he rejoin the group that is going through that compartment? And, uh, oh, I don't know. He's, go he's changing the plan here. He's changed up everything. 
He's uh, just pushing towards the town. He switched out to a siege barracks instead of using the blimp that he had selected originally. He's just going to drive the super witches into the town hall. They went to that compartment unexpectedly, and he's just going to have to work with it. He has this single inferno be engaged by the king at the bottom, but he's kind of taking his uh, time getting to it. They will eventually get it down. He's not out of the woods yet. As far as recovering this, it's still a, it's still a good push here. Like he, he's doing okay. He's doing okay. He's got looks like barbarians and goblins that came out of his uh, siege barracks there. And then a Yeti, they were obviously meant to go take the town hall down, but he had to change the plan here. He's adjusting on the fly. He drops in the jump on the bottom side to try to get everything to regroup and go into the bottom half of that L. That's going to make some all regroup as the troops come out of the CC. The Sneak Gob is surging out ahead. They're clearing the way, making so the barbarians that are following behind with the Super Witches are getting additional value because they're clearing all the collectors and storages, which is making so that everything goes straight to the defenses as they move through. The P.E.K.K.A. out in in front there on the left side he's circling around he can still do this he still has his rc and he has rc ability she comes to the right side he drops into wizard down behind for cleanup he's got archers working the top corner but they get sniped up by the mortar time time is always gonna be a factor here he's recovered it amazingly here he can still pull this through 25 seconds to go and sahara has made the adjustments and he's gonna get out of here with a triple all day long and unicorns of love it's starting to make their comeback after falling behind in the last couple attacks here. But there we go. Kingsman. And he holds together here. Kingsman, I, if I remember right, Kingsman was one of the players who fell short in the previous war. So he's out here trying to recover a little bit with this one. Obviously, his team is uh, pulled up the slack here, and uh, they've got him ahead. But we'll see what Kingsman can do right here with a Queen Charge Hybrid. As he works his way in. We'll see what he does with a Queen Charge coming right in the bottom corner. Catches a double Black Mine right in, out of the gate immediately. A Yeti's form in the funnel. He'll send a couple Hogs, you know, get the CC pull. Does he get a full pull? Got a lot of goblins. Okay, here we go. He got a full pull. He'll poison up. He doesn't get the poison onto these super minions. So he's just going to have to race through and just power through those super minions. He's, he's all right. He's doing good. Freeze up the town hall with the expo and the super minions. And that actually gets him through. He'll continue on and get full value out of this compartment. He can kind of break out of this compartment in either direction. But he has super wall breakers. He might try to super wall break all the way into that multi-inferno in the middle of the base. If he can, that'd be huge value for the queen to set up the hybrid very, very strongly. But which side is he going to come in at? He wall broke open the queen to potentially go into the... Like, look at that wall break that he sent into the cannon down on the left side. If the queen breaks off that direction... Oh, wait. I see what he's doing. I think. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure what he's doing. Where is he trying to push this queen to? Does he try to do another super wall break over on the left side while the hybrid moves in on the right? He's got the siege breaks work on the outside as the king kind of ducked inside of the compartment there. There's the super wall break into the rage. It does give him access directly into the scattershot compartment over on the left side, but the queen is not going in. He didn't get enough clear on the outside. Now the test is drawing her out. That's a problem. This might be what unicorns of love needed, guys. If they can push their way through... Or if, if Kingsman doesn't get the triple here, I meant to say, then they are potentially going to give a chance for uh, Unicorns of Love to make a comeback. But he's still holding strong here. The Queen sir, trying to survive as long as she can. He's got the RC stepping through there. She's going to pick up the healers. The healers are inside the minimum range of the scatter, so they're not going to get fired on, even though they're ni nice and close. But does he have it? Is it enough? He's got the Hog there working on the scatter shot. The Hog has to take the scatter to give him a chance. The healers are trying to keep it up, but this is a critical point. The hog goes down. The warden goes down. And now the wizards are dropping like flies and Kingsman's queen did not cooperate. And that, my friends, might cost him the triples. Not over yet. He's at the wizard ticket. The cat can Oh my God. He's still going to get it. The king will step through. And Kingsman from MCES has got the triple on the board 
And MCEF now three for three. I thought that was in a fail for sure. I thought it was when the queen didn't go get the scatter shot, but he had enough punch at the end. He's able to coast through and MCS is going to stay up by two stars. From this point on, Unicorns of Love needs to play flawless. They have to stay flawless all the way through to the end because they're now behind with two attacks left to go by two stars. They can win on percentage if they can get some defenses on the board and nail some triples here. But this is going to determine the grand finals of the Clash Champs Cup right here, right now. He'll get the uh, chains off of the wall so he'll get a little bit of damage onto that, that, uh, that Lava Hound there. And he'll get the funnel formed to push the heroes into the town hall and take it down. It's already activated. He can go there or he can go to a different spot, but it looks like he is going to drive his queen to fight out the hound. He'll drop in a super wall breaker and that'll make sure that this king goes in. I mean, the king doesn't generally need a lot of help going in, but oh no, he's trying to push the queen in. I thought maybe he was going to try to push the king into the town hall and drive the queen to the scatter shot, but no, he's doing it in the reverse order there. And the queen will take out that, that workshop, driving the king downward into the scatter shot compartment. The timing there was perfect. And he's looking good here. He's looking really, really good. He has an ice golem out in front there. It's going to freeze up everything to protect the queen from the cannons. As she makes her approach, the king will pop his ability, taking out all the defense in that compartment. The queen can pop her ability and bring the town hall down along with the cannon. And then probably even continue on to get the sweeper here to help his Lalo out. And she'll get that. One? Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Sweeper stays standing. Sweeper's going to be knocking back his blues here. He used the headhunters with the ward ability to snipe the enemy queen. Sneak him right in there. The multi inferno needs to be frozen up and he gets it. The RC is sweeping in through where the town hall was to go pick up the multi inferno and the sweeper in the middle base. She gets stalled up for a moment by the tornado trap, but she works her way in. The balloons will travel through there as well. He doesn't really want the balloons going in there. He wanted the RC to arrive a little bit earlier, but the tornado trap stalled her up there and caused some problems. He drops in a freeze on the backside, locking down the multi inferno. The RC will engage the enemy king. She's not long for this world, but she will pop her ability, and her ability will take down the rest of the defenses and push the blows through to the finish. It's a three star and unicorns of love will stay in this war, but they're gonna need a big defense. MCES has been on fire with their last attacks here and unicorns of love just needs to sit back and they need to pray for a defense. Koma Kun has done all that he can. It's up to his teammate. It's up to defense. MCS controls the war. Well, let's see what they can do. MCES with an opportunity to close it out right now. They can end this with a triple and then just a safe two star in their final attack. Remio with the opportunity to close out the war and not allow Unicorns of Love a chance to make a comeback. He's started with a Skelly Donut Lalo. Skelly Donut will take out the CC. Quake will soften it up there, taking out... Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, I thought it wasn't going to go down there for a second, but that always scares me. That always scares me. But the Lightning combined with the extra Quake to finish off the CC will take out the multi in the middle. He'll leave up the Expo, leave up the Sweeper. He'll have to find a way to deal with those later. It's going to potentially path a couple blooms through the core of the base, and he'll drop in his RC to come in here with an invisibility to go in here to get the enemy RC and grab out this multi-inferno. He had the invisibility spell. He'll try to work his way through. He... He goes down. All right. He doesn't get the uh, entire compartment cleared there of all the defenses and let that enemy RC up. If she jumps the wall here, is this a Yeti blimp? Yes, it is. The Yeti's... Look at that. She jumps the wall and that allows the Yeti to attack her and that finishes breaking the ring of defenses. Can he get that sweeper down in the middle? I suppose they're picking off the Yeti mites, but he does get the pathing for the Yeti mites to go take out the arch tower over there. Doesn't get the sweeper in the middle. He wouldn't really like the sweeper. But the Lalo isn't going to have to fight the Sweeper. He has to go to the core anyways to go after the uh, Expo. He just needs like one balloon to split off. He doesn't want an excessive amount of balloons to go that direction. But his Queen and the King will work their way around this Town Hall. Take it down with the Queen ability. And the King will clear on the outside for a little bit longer. Distracting the Eagle. Keeping the damage off of the Queen while she does what she needs to do on the inside. She doesn't get the can, Doesn't get the Expo. Leaving up a lot of just defensive structures that aren't really a huge threat. He also left up that air defense there. 
Lots of Tess has popped around the area and uh, sawed up his heroes from going through there, but the Hound is crossing over the air defense. It could maybe actually take that air defense down with the pups if he can get lucky with it, but he's got a good split on the blues here. Everything is collapsing in from everywhere, and look at that. All ground targeting defense is left, and the blues will carry through for the triple, and MCES, after losing the first war, have showed absolute dominance in this round. Tons of red bombs go off at the end in the middle, but I think that is going to lock in a potential win here for MCES. They only need to get a safe two-star to close out the war, but anything could happen. It would be insane if the last attacker didn't do a completely safe two-star, but things can go wrong. Things can go wrong even when you think you have a safe attack. So we will see what MCS will do on their last attack. But let's dive over to Unicorns of Love striking next. All right, guys. Here we go. The final two attackers will go at the same time, but we'll watch Unicorns of Love. We'll see if they can get in here and get a three star. If they can get a three star and then... If they can just get a stroke of luck and get MCS to one star on the final attack, the war could swing back into Unicorns of Love favor. That would be absolutely insane if that happened. We won't expect it to happen. But if it does, it would be pretty wild. He just weakens up this uh, single Inferno just a bit so that the Warden can move through it easier. But then he doesn't finish it. What's he doing here? The queen can go in there and one-shot it. He drops in a balloon. More tests pop on him. You don't have to go to ability. You'll have to use a freeze or something. You don't go to ability. Okay, the balloon will take out the inferno. Oh, oh not quite. The queen finishes, though. Okay. He's all right. Or with the super witches. He already used the siege barracks, and he'll round around this town hall. Interesting approach here. Did he just miss his lightning? What happened with that that made so that he didn't get that Inferno down? I mean, he had to go to his Queen ability because of that. And his King will collapse the Witches towards the Town Hall. To, so they go in through the jump. They're going to get distracted onto the enemy RC and go south for a bit. But they should turn back. They do. Okay. He's got the Yetis and uh, Valkyrie that come out of his Siege Barracks over on the left-hand corner. Queen will pop her ability. Or the Warden will pop her ability, I mean. Take the town hall down. Not a big deal there. All the barbarians uh, staying protected by the warden ability. And uh, going to stay working with the queen there. Giving her some extra protection. They'll go down very quickly to the scatter shot when they start getting hit. But he's got the nice push going to the bottom inferno. He's looking good here. He could, he could get the triple here. If he gets the triple here, it gives his team just a glimmer of hope. The queen... Unfortunately, doesn't have her ability, and the healers are nowhere around to go lock onto her. So, if she gets the scatter shot down, that'd be huge. If that's her last push, no, oh, she doesn't get it. Oh no, the scatter shot stays standing. He's got a big boy out there on, on the outside of the wall. If he could get the witch to go and get the scatter shot, that'd be really good. Where's this RC? His RC pops her ability, takes down the enemy Grand Warden with the first strike after it. Moving to the Arch Tower, she can move through the Warden. The Warden, take it, take it, Warden. This is for the. There it is! That could be the triple difference right there. Taking down the scatter shot. I guess the witch is on her way as well. Maybe I'm uh, exaggerating a little bit, but there we go. Unicorns of Love has got the triple on the board. But did MCS get a one star? Let's go find out. All right, here we go. The final attack from MCS. <laughs> What is this army? Guys, he's got mass hogs. Mass hogs. And he's going for the perfect war. But if he one stars, then Unicorns of Love will take the win. If he messes up the hogs here and loses too many of them early, he can lose out on a lot of percentage, but he'll dive right in after the town hall. Runs into a lava hound. He has the ice golems. Looks like a triple ice golem in a wall record to die after the town hall. And if he get the town hall down, let's secure the first star. Now he just needs to reach 50% and his team will be going on to victory in this grand finals match for the Clash Champs Cup. He drops in a couple archers behind the queen trying to help her deal with the pups and get through a little bit faster. Don't waste the value. In come the hogs in from the right side. 
I think he's gonna make it to the two star. I think they're gonna take the win, but can they go all the way and get the perfect war? Ward ability through the Eagle Strikes and the Scattershot approach through the enemy heroes. Tons of headhunters in the mix there. He'll engage all the enemy heroes all early in the attack there. While his headhunters are attacked, they quickly take them all down. He has a split of the hogs here. Some of them go south, some of them go to the middle. They take out the multi inferno. Heal on both sides. He work his way to the Eagle Artillery. He'll regroup there, but does he take too much damage on the approach? The Eagle Strikes down. He's got the heal in place. Got a couple of hogs down with the RC. He'll freeze up the Eagle before it can get another strike off. Yeah, take it down. He's got one more freeze, one more heal. Doesn't have a lot of hogs left. Oh, Springs taking out a big chunk of his hogs. He's down to two. He has to use his last heal early as he goes in. And my friends, I think it's going to be MCS's first fail. There's still a lot of base left here. But we'll see if he can carry through a little bit further. He pops the ability and the queen, or the, the RC, I mean, takes down a big chunk of the Tessa farm and she breaks the safety. She goes away from the remaining defenses that can hit her hard. He has to tank him for the sneaky goblins on the side there. He can carry through. Synthe has plenty of time to clean it up. He carries through with the freeze, takes the archer tower down. And that RC ability at the end, clearing out the Tessa farm with no ground skillies popping on him, is going to be enough to carry MCES to victory. And they are our Clash Champs Cup Grand Finals champions. They're going to be walking away with the prize money and the win. Losing the first war. 13 to 13 on percentage, but makes a comeback here and brings it home. But guys, if you enjoyed that war, then make sure you hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to use code ERIC. We tried to give a chunk of the proceeds from people using code ERIC back to the viewers here during the live stream. So come hang out on Twitch here. And that is where we're going to wrap it up for today. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.